Hello boys and girls. It's Miss Harlan again, here to teach you this week about uh, water pressure, to learn a little bit about it. Um, water pressure is the force that makes water come out of your faucets into your sinks and tubs. In Chicago, a big city, they have big um, water cleaning plants and pumping stations that make sure the water pressure is constant. It gets pumped in so that it means pushed. It's like pushed in. If you live in a small town and you see a water tower, small towns are known for water towers because they're used to create water pressure. And that's what we're gonna look at today. You've probably seen water towers if you've driven outside of the city or lived elsewhere, suburb or country. But I'm gonna show you a few today. Um, here is a picture of some water towers, typical. This is of course more of an old fashioned one, more modern. This one's painted just to stand out, maybe for planes, won't get, um, run into it. They often have lights on top of them. Here's some more water towers that have been decorated. One looks like the earth. One pineapple, watermelon, and a peach. People get very creative. Next. Here's two that are disguised. This one looks like some kind of old part of a castle. I think it's very pretty. And here, this is actually near us. This is the Leaning Tower Y, um, Leaning Tower in Niles, Illinois. And I have to tell you, I only found out researching uh, water tower pictures. I only found out now that that is a water tower. They created it to, um, supply water pressure to fill their pools. This is right in front of the Leaning Tower Y on, I believe it's Tui Avenue in Niles. It looks like the Leaning Tower of Pisa that you would see in Paris. And yes, it's supposed to be on an angle. And here's a famous water tower also near us, not far from the airport. This is in Rosemont, Illinois. Rosemont, Illinois, because of their name, Rosemont, decorated their water tower with roses all around it. So it looks like a great big uh, bouquet of roses. I think it's very pretty. I've always liked it. And if you go out to O'Hare Airport, you'll see it. This picture gives you an idea of how a water tower works. And there's a different design, kind of looks like a spaceship. So what they do is they do use a small pump that pumps fresh water into the water tower. And they're usually very elevated because that's where the pressure comes from. All that water pushing on the way out. The water wants to come down and go out. And so it put, creates pressure by pushing down like that. Of course, we've learned that there has to be air coming into there. If it was completely sealed, the um, it would be a, a tight uh, vacuum kind of situation where the water wouldn't get pushed out. So air is coming through probably a filter screen somewhere there, comes down and supplies us in our homes. Have you ever been in the shower when somebody else turns on the water in your house and it changes the temperature of the water or the amount of water you're going to get? So this is just demonstrating how water pressure is supplied so it can come down and go up. And we're going to, and without needing a pump, the pump is just to pump the water into there and it's also like, um, besides supplying water pressure 
it is an emergency supply of water in case their pump goes out. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to look at how a water tower works. I've put it together a demonstration and I've created a Newfield School water tower. So there you go. Newfield Lions with our lion on top of the water tower. That's just something for fun. And this is what we're going to do. So we're going to have to look at the back of it. And I'm going to finish setting this up right now. So I'm going to turn this down so you can see what we're going to do. Okay. There is a little straw kit that I have that looks like it's plumbing. Uh, it was fun figuring out how to make this all work. And so what I have here are two receptacles to collect the water, pretend like they're sinks. I have clips on them to close them off so the water won't just start shooting out when I fill up the water tower. Then I have a bottle of water. I've dyed the water blue so as it comes through the pipes, you'll be able to see it. So now, let's turn this, pull this a little bit more into view. And you can watch. Did I make sure I had that on there tight? I think so. All right. Start filling up the water tower. There we go, I think that's enough, but I'm wondering why it hasn't already started going. Ah, it's dripping a bit. Let's see. Let's open up one of our, one of our pipes and see if that makes the water pull out. So then it will have so there we go, right away. Look at that. Oh, it's coming pretty, pretty quick. Can you see it? Now let me show you what happens when I open the other one. There it comes. But do you notice that the first one slows down a little bit? It did because now we're calling for two places for the water to be. I'm going to just fill up some more water into our water tower. And I'm going to close off the one that's almost full. There we go. And let this other one over here keep filling up. So that's how a water tower works. That's what water pressure is. If this was not elevated, then the water would just be laying flat. It wouldn't matter that the pipes were there because the, oh, I'm overflowing. Let me clip this one off. <laughs> I have a lot of mistakes with plumbing in my life and I just had it in my experiment too. Okay. Well, that's it boys and girls. It worked because the top of this water tower is 